Knicks fans of the round table. The round table discussion hosted by Knicks fans for the fans. All right, fellas. So last topic, one that uh, I was, I was kind of interested in. I hadn't really heard too many um, publications or, or the, the, the blogosphere uh, speaking on. The Hall of Fame nominees for the 2019 NBA Hall of Fame were released after the 2018 enshrinement. Salute to Jason Kidd, who got in once Nick, always a Nick. We'll, we'll claim him and his greatness, even mm-hmm. though, you know, he, he, for hey, that one half a hey, for one, that one half a season, <laughs> he was doing his thing. I hated him when he was on the net. I Listen, the old that. second half, he couldn't hit the broad side of a barn, but, we'll, mm-hmm. we'll, you know, he, he gave us a, a little boost. But, yep. um, but but his counterpart, who was an in the city counterpart for a little while, and Stefan Marbury, his name is, is on the nominee or the eligibility list, I should say. Um, Al, give me your take, man. Steph Steph was uh, making his case for the Hall of Fame all last week, going back and forth, throwing jabs. Then he mm-hmm. kind of like then he jumped on his IG stories and started saying Zion was going to be the new goat. I, I thought we was gonna have <laughs> another Vaseline that. meltdown, man. But yeah. he, he, he seemed to be raining it in. But uh, make your case. Is Steph does Steph make a good case for the Hall of Fame? Yes or no, Alex Wolf. I would say so. All right, I'll just give my answer first, and then I'm gonna just. Okay. I'm gonna say yes. Yes, he does. Oh, okay. Now, now here's here's the reason. So check this out. So unlike the baseball and football Hall of Fames, granted football, there's no international players anyway. Mm-hmm. This is really- country in the world that like truly plays football uh but the unlike the baseball hall of fame where it's only based on u.s achievements in major league baseball the basketball hall of fame is worldwide it considers international achievements as well as nba achievements as well as college achievements as well as playing for your country achievements now Steph didn't play for his country, as far as I know, or maybe maybe he, 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 he was on that O four team, but it, it was oh, so uh, it, uh, it was so not memorable that yeah. you forget yeah. about it. He was on yep. the shit one. Yeah. All right, yep. so yep. so we'll forget about that. But yep. so in the NBA, he had sixteen thousand two hundred ninety seven career points, which okay. is good for a hundred ninth of all time. He had six thousand four hundred seventy one assists, which was twenty sixth all time. And he had 1,022 steals, which is 163rd all time. So he's roughly top 150 in three categories. And in assists, he's actually quite high at 26. Yeah. Um, but the the icing on the cake here, I mean, his his NBA career came with its up and downs. You know, he had the the he had kind of a ter- uh, Terrell Owens vibe about him. You know, in the in the NBA, he was very hot and cold and and kind of wacky and made you scratch your head a lot with the stuff that he did. But on the court, he was he was undeniably brilliant at times, but then at other times, head-scratchingly terrible. Um, so, that you know, it was kind of a give and take with him in the NBA. However, once he got done at the NBA, he went to the Chinese Basketball Association, which is a frequent place for uh, former NBA players to go or players that weren't quite good enough to hack it for the NBA. But it's actually a fairly competitive league. Um, while he was there, he played for the Beijing Ducks primarily, and he won three titles there. He won a finals MVP on one of those three title teams. He has a freaking statue outside of the building. They love him so much. They built the damn statue outside (laughs) of the stadium. Uh, and overall he finally, the, the biggest thing to me is that he finally grew up over there. Uh, he became arguably one of the more important basketball ambassadors in history. I think because he he's one of the most universally accepted Americans in China, like natural born American that went to China. I would say arguably even outside of basketball, he's one of probably the best American ambassadors that we've had to that country Mm. like ever. Um, So, and he's also been a great humanitarian Uh, even when he was in the U S uh, he donated millions of his own dollars to 9-11 relief, Katrina relief, uh, the New York City Police Department, Fire Department, uh, EMTs, teachers, all while he was in the U.S. And then he was also the first immigrant in China to ever receive the Top 10 Model Citizen Award in Beijing, which is apparently Damn. a large uh, uh, honor there. So, And then to top it all off, uh, he back then and still maintains it to this day has his Starberry line of shoes, which are uh, only like 25 bucks a pair bucks, man. Right. Remember when they were at Stephen Barry's? Yep. 
Yep. You know, Stephen Barry's. <laughs> so, uh, affordable Rest in basketball. Stephen Barry's. It, affordable basketball sneakers, and you know, to, to try to help kids that can't afford the Nikes and the Adidas's of the world, you know, get a good pair of ball shoes. So, yeah, but it, the humanitarian stuff doesn't necessarily count. Although I think it helps his case to, to rebuild his reputation from being like a goofball or like a, you know, a, a malcontent or whatever, but just pure basketball achievements aside, you know, on their own, he has a good NBA resume and a great international resume in China. So I, I think he's a hall of famer. I, I think based on the merit of the fact that this is an international basketball hall of fame. J, hall J. Ellis seems to disagree, man. J. Ellis jump in here. Ah, oh, man, I'm going back and forth this one. I'm not going to lie. But it's like, because Marbury is a great basketball player. I'm not, I don't want to take away from any of his achievements. I wanted him in New York when I first, when he, before he got here. But he comes with his lumps. Um, I know he, he would, you know what it is? He had a lot of years in the NBA where it was a little bit shaky. Wasted. Yeah. <laughs> it was a little bit shaky. And then a couple, couple that with, there are some guys who, who on that ballot who still aren't in the NBA Hall of Fame, who aren't there yet that I can't can't see him leapfrogging. Like they still don't have uh, Tim Hardaway there. They still don't have Chris Webber there. They still don't have Kevin Johnson there who was going toe to toe with, with Magic Johnson who was averaging 20 and 10. So I don't, maybe it could be down the line, but you gotta, to me, you have KJ who's there around like, when Magic was there and he's still not in, you got to at least get him in first. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. See, see. And, go ahead, Jay. And I, I, I guess, and I guess it depends on what you kind of value more as well. Cause like you said, this international game is really, I guess the, the thing you spotlight if you're really trying to make a case for Starbury, because he did bring those championships to, um, to China, and he had he averaged like forty five points, and one crazy points. But then, it, then it, you, you just start, you just start to think, how? I mean, you said it's fairly competitive, is it? I'm not sure how competitive it really. Far for the NBA. Yeah. Yeah, I would say it's like you could definitely like it's definitely not the NBA. It's definitely not even like the um. What's the uh the the Liga Liga A or whatever whatever the one is in Spain like their yeah, top league like, that like, oh, and, that the Spain one the European one like one and two yeah. so he's not know. there but it, I'll probably put it at at maybe a little above some of those like second tier leagues in Europe you know what I mean like they, a they say it, they say it, um the CBA they rank it right right below the ACB I believe either ACB oh. and then the Turkish league and then CBA or. There you go. Yeah. So, I mean, that's, that's pretty solid. That's yeah, the third yeah. best league in the world. Yeah. CK, what, what do you think when people say, um, especially in terms of like a guy like Steph, how do you, how do you put, uh, how do you rate the stats um, and the, and the, you know, off the court accolades and how do you stack that up against, you know, people who say, well, he didn't really accomplish anything. Well, two two statements. I just want to say shout out to our own Emmanuel Moutier, who uh, almost took them out in the playoffs. Indeed, on the Sharks. They, they but, go yeah, head to know, head. Be, yeah, yeah, yeah. I just want to point that out there because I'm a Moutier defender. Anyways, uh, <laughs> <laughs> now, <laughs> now, my favorite basketball player of all time is Tracy McGrady, who just got uh, inducted last year. Um, and, well, first answer your first question. You said, you said off the court as well, right? So personally, I don't know if that should ha- – it's it's the Basketball Hall of Fame. So I off the court stuff, we have crazies that are in there now. It, it, that doesn't matter. So on the court stuff, um, I like using this example because a lot of people – well, not a lot. There's there, there's a good share of people who think that T-Mac probably didn't deserve to be in the hall before a lot of the names that Jay said. And, um, yeah, cra- Alex, my man. See, Alex, Alex gets me. It's crazy. <laughs> but, you know – I'm not saying in any way, shape, or form is he the same as Stephon Marbury, but at the same time, when you add up every round of applause to Alex with all that work he just put in, because he answered a lot of questions and put in a lot of blanks that I had. <laughs> but if you, <laughs> as a whole of Stephon Marbury's career, basketball wise, whether it be over in China, whether it be here, I feel like, you know, you still won championships. You still won against because because a lot of those teams that he played against, there were correct me if I'm wrong, there were players that were in the NBA that were on those teams that he played against. So 
yes, they might not have been Stephon Mar- Marbury level, but they were still NBA talent that were on those teams that he had. Yeah, I think he, he had played with, um, I think Randolph Morris was on his team, Foreman mm-hmm. Nick, who scrubbed it out. He, I think Will Bynum, Will Bynum was there. Bynum a couple, was a couple, yes, yeah, he was, couple, he was on, uh, he was there. with uh, Moody. He was on Moody's <laughs> team. He was on Moody's <laughs> team. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, he was on the case there. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> but um, I just feel like as a overall basketball, like Alex Scott, you, that, that was so amazing. Al pulled out the stats, boy. <laughs> yeah, man, because we are bas- NBA basketball, whatever. That is one of the sports where the hall is of, of the whole sport of its entirety. And mm-hmm. we can't we can't just shake off the stuff he did over there because of the half stuff that he did over here kind of you know what i mean mm-hmm. like he had some years that we forget about like we forget he was he helped spark up the t-wolves back in the day before he eventually <laughs> left that situation uh sadly he's he's only remembered for his knuckleheadness over here in new york and all that stuff but he had a a, a good career all-star career here uh in the nba and then i feel like stacking what he did in china on top of that does put him in the conversation now it's hard for me to also with what Jay said to put them over like Chris Weber and these guys, but at the same time, I feel like maybe not this year, maybe not next year. I feel like he is definitely hundred percent Hall of Famer, no yeah. doubt, no doubt in my mind. About when that's a different conversation. That that's because it's, it's a because that yeah, list first man. ballot. No, it's it's crazy. Crazy. The first let me, of the- crazy. Yes, yes. Oh, let, me ask, let me ask one question real quick. Okay, if Yao Ming was. Uh, Yao Ming, I believe, was first ballot. If Yao Ming yeah. is a Hall of Famer, he was. How can you make a case that Steph yeah, is a Hall of Famer? Yeah. I mean, this, okay, but then you can still say the same thing about Tim Hardaway Jr. I mean, Tim Hardaway and mm-hmm. Kevin Johnson and, and Chris Webber and even people like Chauncey Billups. Like you can say that about those guys too, because they because even even I feel like even those guys had more of an overall positive impact on a team than Steph has. And Steph has the numbers. But I think what Alex is saying though is that on top of his great career in the NBA, he has the China the China basketball background as well. I think. It's and, and let's say that it's not even just the background, right? Do some guys get inducted not just for what they did on the court, but for their ambassadorship? Of- right. It seems like Yao Ming is a lot about that. Exactly. Even he did have a lot of accolades yeah. in China. Yeah. Yao Ming was one of the biggest worldwide ambassadors of this game ever. You know what I mean? And and I think you could argue that Steph did that, but kind of yeah. in a in a more roundabout kind of way. You know, he started off in the U.S. as a major U.S. star, and he went the opposite route of what Yao did. He went to China and became a star in China. You know, right. and it made people in the states care about what was going on over there because he was winning championships and got a statue, so people were thinking, were caring yeah. about what was going on in that league. Steph, Steph's, Steph's strong points are his international. Yeah, yeah, one hundred percent. But it's not like he was. I guess, I guess that's, it's like, what do you value more? But it's not like he was a in the international NBA. play over the over the local NBA play. I guess that's that's the problem. That's but the he wasn't a, he wasn't a scrub in the NBA either. No, he, he wasn't. Was, no, he, he was he, an all star. You know, I mean, he was a good player here too. Yeah, I'm not, yo, I am not saying Steph Armour Bray was a scrub. That's yeah. not what I'm saying. No, Steph I don't. Armour Bray had at <laughs> twenty. He was doing what? 20 and 8 for like six seasons yes. hovering around. Yep. The deaf ears, like he's yep. not a scrub. I'm just, mm-hmm. I'm just, it's just like when. If it took, I guess it took Kevin Johnson still like in. My man, yeah. Seriously. And it's been that long. So I don't, it's like when? When does that mm-hmm. happen? If it's taking that long for KJ to get in, do we do we have Steph leapfrogging over KJ and Chris Webber? Like it just doesn't seem fathomable to me to do that. That's why. Just from a pure basketball standpoint, I, I, I agree. It doesn't seem right, but yeah. it, it, it's, it's more like a, like a, what did he bring to the game of basketball more so than just playing? At least that's the way I look at it. That's the way I think that the NBA hall of fame looks at it is, you know, what did, what did this player do for the game of basketball? The Not necessarily. What did he do on the court? You know what I mean? That's how I see it. On the court for the game of basketball. Okay. I mean, I guess if you're talking about ambassadorship, Mm-hmm. Yes, because he he did the. I mean, I think that's what you're. That's, that's, that's basically what I'm getting at. Uh, yeah, yeah I'm, you're talking about the shoe stuff, which is dope. I understand. I'm talking about the basketball stuff. Like mm-hmm. 
but like the the other thing too is that he literally like he went from being an all star here to basically being like their Michael Jordan over there. You know what I mean? Superstar. He's like he's like their goat there. You know, yeah. he's got three. He had like three straight titles or whatever, or like three titles. He's got he's got the statue of him with the thing. He averaged forty five points in a final series. I mean, he's like he's like their best player ever over there. Legend. I understand. Yeah. I just that's what I'm saying. It's just it's what do you value more? Yes, yeah, it's, it's I value the NBA more. I think that's what it, I value the yeah. NBA. Oh, more. and you should. I mean, the NBA uh, should be he, weighted higher. It yeah. Like I don't, I, I don't know if you can average that in the NBA. Well, he, clearly he couldn't because even in his prime, he only averaged twenty and yeah. eight. Yeah, so. not to take away from his skill set, but <laughs> yeah, I can't. He, he he was never able to do that in the NBA for a reason, I think, and not not to take. But he's still a great player. He's mm-hmm. still a really good player. That doesn't, doesn't take away his talent at all. I was Steph fan, but I just me too. My jersey in there somewhere. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That I, I mean, uh, you know, just to take the last point on it, I, I think you know, to Alex's point, it seems like the NBA takes, um, you know, and and to see Case point, I think you know they they take the global game into consideration. Once you did at each level, wherever you are, not just the NBA. I think uh, for that reason, it has the lowest bar. I think in terms of um, you know other sports like baseball is very very stringent on on statistics. Uh, football a little bit more so, and then NBA a little bit less so, and then NBA even a bit less. Uh, I still think the nineteen and eight is nothing to sneeze at, man. That twenty and eight. I think Steph did put up numbers while he was here in the NBA. Um, they, there was also twenty and ten, twenty and ten when he was playing for for Snow. Uh, yeah. Whoever did twenty and ten yeah. was career. I was, <laughs> I was reading an interesting stat too, man. It said um, the only player so Steph averaged twenty and eight eight times in his career. That was more than Isaiah, who did it six times. More than Magic, who did it five. Gary Payton, the glove five. Westbrook five. CP three four. AI two, Curry two, uh, Derrick Rose two, Steve Nash zero. So yeah. I, I mean, Steve, oh wow, yeah, Steve Nash yeah, never did average twenty, 20 points 20 a game. Eight. I mean, so Damn. you know, you, you you wish you would have had some more success, especially here with the Knicks, his hometown team, you know. But um, I think yeah, but they were not. But, oh gosh, that's yeah. a conversation for another day. Yeah, yeah it's like stats and impact. That's like that's that's an impact. Stats versus yeah. impact is like the yeah. tricky thing because like you yeah. have Mark Jackson who averaged like eight points. Mm-hmm. Is, but he had an impact so the man was yeah 100 all right so for the final segment i'm gonna give each of these guys 30 seconds to make their final statement plug their channels and get their point across ck2k i'm starting with you on the <sighs> mark get set go uh i'm not gonna put my channel too much you know me or if you don't ck2k go check me out on uh youtube 2k talk about the knicks all the time you know you know the deal but my final statement is just be patient with the season that we are about to have that's all i want to say i got my moody and naysayers i got my uh we got people over here talking about trey burke starting frank is it too all these things just be patient with the team that we got we have a good product for the first time in a long time and this is the beginning of what could be a good thing for the new york oh. knicks that's all i got that's all i need to say CK2K. All right. Yeah. Ooh, that, was, <laughs> that was pretty good, man. All right, Al, we're going to start you off in. Give me a second here. All right. Alex Wolf in five, four, three, two. Alex Wolf, 30 seconds. Go. So, yeah, I mean, my statement would just be uh, you know, don't come into this season with too many expectations, but be prepared to have a lot of fun. I think this team's going to be fun. Um, but it might not be pretty all the time. <laughs> but, uh, you can check me out on uh, postingandtoasting.com, SB Nation's official uh, New York Knicks blog. And uh, it, we're pumping out some good, uh, you know, season previews right now for the players. We're writing some cool stuff. We're going to have lots of good stuff for you guys this season. You can check me out on Twitter at the Alex Wolf with an E at the end, although thankfully on here on like podcast you can see my name already spelled out so <laughs> all right alex Wolf, <laughs> man. appreciate it appreciate it all right jay ellis sure. you're on the clock in three two one go man i don't got that much to say all i got to say is i'm gonna love my team i love my team i'm gonna be next to life now i can't wait to see what we do this season i can't wait to see frank prove the naysayers wrong 
I can't wait for Tim Hardaway to put up 20 points consistently this year, for real, for real. <laughs> and Moody, I got my eye on you. I know CK likes Moody, but Moody, I got my eye on you. I got my eye on you. I'm hoping this gets Five you right. Seconds. Oh, yeah. And also, check out nickatimeshow.com and watch out for merch. Coming soon. Probably tomorrow. Plugging the merch. There you go. There you yes, go. Sir. Yes, sir. So, yo, for everybody watching at home, vote on the panel today. Who made the best points? Vote for your winner of today's yes. round table. Was it CK2K? Was it Alex Wolf? Or was it Jay Ellis? The fan poll is up at the top pan, at the right hand side of the screen, at the top right, the little eye icon. Click on the eye and vote in tonight's fan poll for your winner. And we'll announce the winner on Saturday. Um, yeah, that's it, man. Yo, fellas, CK, Alex, J. Ellis, appreciate the time, man. Until next time. Yeah, thanks, man.